So uh, here's how electric potential is officially defined. So this is definition. This is the definition of electric potential. Electric potential is a scalar because it's the dot product of two vectors. Okay, so from this we see that it is defined as a scalar uh, quantity. So it's a scalar. And it's a scalar whose meaning is associated with the difference between two numbers. Okay. Like when you say something is at 1,000 volts, it has no meaning at all. What, you're, what you should say is that something is at 1,000 volts with respect to another point, which is at 0 volts. Right? So 1,000 volts has no meaning. Just like when I say that the potential energy of this cup is 4 joules. Well, with respect to what? With respect to the table, the potential energy is 0 joules. When I let go of it, the four joules changes, uh, drops to zero joules, and the uh, potential energy changes to kinetic energy. So potential energy has only meaning when you say the difference between two potential energies. Four joules by itself doesn't mean anything. Right? Same thing with electric potential. Uh, the thousand volt doesn't mean anything. It's the difference between two points. So wh what this is telling you is the voltage difference between two points in space is equal to the straight line integral, uh, the straight line integral of the electric field along that space. Okay. Uh, the units of electric potential is the whatever the units of uh, electric field is times the units of meter. So it would be newton per coulomb times uh, uh, meter. That would be the units of electric potential. But since it is used so much, we give it a different name, named after the scientist whose name is Volt. Okay, and uh, so that is abbreviated as a volt. Okay. Uh, now, from there, we get a secondary unit for electric field. So far, we've been always saying electric field is Newton per Coulomb, right? This is the unit for electric field. So here's how we get the second unit for electric field. We can say electric field is units of volt per meter. So from now on, sometimes when I refer to electric field, I'm going to say volt per meter. And you're going to see that in the book, too. Instead of Newton per coulomb, you can just say volt per meter. Okay. So here's what this is saying. Okay. Let's take, for example, the simplest charge, um, which is a point charge. Okay. So let's say the point charge is a positive Q. And I want to know the electric potential difference between this point and this point. So here is my V1. Uh, here is my v, uh, V2 and V1. I want to know the difference between uh, the electric potential of those two points, any two points in space. OK? So what it's telling you is um, integrate the electric field in that space from 1 to 2, you see, from 1 to 2, but integrate the negative of the integral. There is a reason they did the negative, and you'll see uh, as we, as we uh, go about. They didn't have to put a negative here, but there was a reason why they did that. Okay, So they, this one was uh, optional, sort of. Okay, So when, we, when I integrate v2 minus v1, what is the electric field of a point charge? Now I'm going to integrate it from, from 1 to 2, right? So from R1 to R2. I'm going to integrate the electric field from R1 to R2. But the negative of the integral. OK? So what is the electric field? Well, the point charge, the electric field is kq over r squared, right? And dr, in reality, the electric field is a vector that's this way. dr is also a vector that's that way. And they're in the same direction, right? Because I'm integrating from r1 to r2, so I'm going in that direction. dr is in that direction, 
and the electric field is in that direction, so their dot product is just simply E dr, right? Uh, so K, the E is KQ of R squared dr. Now I'm going to integrate this, so what's the integral of that? And uh, the integral of uh, 1 over R squared is negative uh, 1 over R, right? Negative 1 over R. That negative 1 over R cancels this negative, the original negative, right? So I end up with uh, KQ over R, R1 to R2. Okay, so that's uh, what that tells us. Uh, the, two, the, the points V2 minus V1 is equal to KQ over R2 minus KQ over R1. Now, if they didn't have the negative, it would have ended up being KQ over R1 minus KQ over R2, okay? So let's, let's put this some number here. Imagine that the charge is uh, uh, 1 nanocoulombs. what would happen, okay? So, uh, K would be 9 times 10 to the 9th, and 1 nanocoulomb is uh, 10 to the minus 9. I did that on purpose so that all the power of the 10 cancels. So we just get some number here, 9 over uh, R2 minus 9 over R1. So let's say, let's now give, uh, let's say R1 is uh, 1 meter, R2 is 2 meters. Then what's the potential difference between that? Uh, 9 over uh, 2 over 9 over 1, right? So we get uh, 9, um, we could factor out to 9. Half minus 1 is uh, uh, 1, uh, negative half, right? So negative uh, 9 over 2, right? Which is negative 4.5 volts. So what that's telling you is if you have a charge uh, of one nanocoulomb, that charge sets up a potential field around it, an uh, equipotential field, right? One meter away from it, the, the potential, whatever the potential is going to be, uh, uh, we don't quite know. But we know if it's two meters away from it, then the potential difference between uh, the one and the two is negative four and a half. Okay, so uh, which another way of saying that is if I take the v one over there and the negative four and a half over here. Another way to rewrite this is V1 is equal to V2 plus 4.5, right? So whatever voltage this is, whatever potential this is, let's just say uh, it's uh, uh, four, 15 volts, and then this is 4.5 volts higher than that, so 19.5 uh, volts, you see? Now we might be able to answer uh, why uh, they defined uh, the potential with that negative before the integral. 